All right, we just got rocked by Tim Flannery's live performance in studio, and now here we are with a little bonus flan. So Polly and I were going to steal him for a couple more minutes. Uh, Tim, first of all, great show. Nice Thank you. you. And we'll talk about Slims tonight, or tomorrow night, pardon me. But uh, first and foremost, on the Giants, um, we talked about Matt Duffy's inspirational role. He wrote a piece for the Players' Tribune talking about how Hunter Pence told him when you got it into the clubhouse, we need you right away. There's no hazing. You were part of that clubhouse. Can you talk about that rookie culture or well, how the Giants treated a guy like Duffy to make him feel that he's necessary right away? The Giants have a great way of bringing those types of characters in, uh, you know, and I mean good characters, uh, professional people, and Matt Duffy's that. Uh, but then you talk about the veterans, uh, the atmosphere that's created by Boach and the staff. Uh, it's a it's a together team, and and then even guys that and we've had success over the years with Boach. I was with him 16 years. That even people that we hear are hey you don't want this guy he's trouble, but we need that type of guy uh, if his talent is that what we needed, and we would bring him in. There would never be any issue. They would fall right in and and love the way it's all been handled. But you know, Hunter probably early said to Matt, hey uh, be seen and not heard, which most that's what you get when you're a rookie coming in. Uh, but he, he's already that way anyway. He's very respectful. He was raised the right way, and he understands if you honor the game, the game honors you. Yeah. Tim Flannery with us here. All right, so when I'm thinking about character guys and guys kind of falling right in, as you said, Tim, I think about Kelby Tomlinson. The job this kid has done since he got up here is pretty impressive. I mean, he doesn't seem to be phased by any pressure situation. He's versatile, a little good second baseman, center fielder as well. Uh, well your breakdown on young Kelby, Specs Tomlinson, we call him. Yeah, I call him Spuds McKenzie. Nice, nice. <laughs> Old Chris Sabo, you remember back yeah, in the day. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't talk. You talk about a guy that's quiet. Kelby is very quiet. I went up to him yesterday and just tried to connect a little bit with him because I <laughs> I was born in Tulsa, though I only lived there a year, and he's yeah. an Oklahoma kid. Yeah. So uh, I asked the other coaches, and you're right, he makes great adjustments. He, he talks the game. He understands that they're going to pitch you. You know, he, He's already been through the league once or twice where they can make adjustments on you, and if you can't make adjustments, you're back in AAA quickly because yeah. it gets around the league in 30 seconds. Uh, but his speed, you know, speed shows up at the ballpark every day. If, if, if you're not hitting, if you're not pitching, speed's always there. You can always count on it. So that's a, a great weapon to have. And you know what? They're all homegrown kids. They're all yeah. coming from the organization. And that holds people accountable, too. They know each other instead of just playing with each other for two years and gone, you know? It's like my, when I played, we played with the same team for 10 years, yeah. you know? That's how it was in the 80s. So it, the Giants do a great job developing, marketing, uh, signing and maybe even overpaying at times to keep them all together so the fans can relate and yeah. have heroes. Right. Just real quick, could you throw him a center fielder's glove next spring, or is that just too tough an ask? I, I don't have not seen. I you know I haven't. I don't know him that well, and I haven't seen him play the outfield. But I've seen him run. I've seen his instincts. I don't think it's too much to ask. He could be a super utility player too. You know, he could play infield, outfield in our league. Uh, coming off that bench, and if you could double switch for every single guy on the field, and you can run, and you can hit, you're probably going to be used every night, especially the way the Giants play in a lot of close close games. Now you said it was last question, baseball question, then one music. Uh, you you said it's all about homegrown, but sometimes you do need the guys who come in from the outside, and that would be Marlon Bird and Mike Leak. Now it may not end in a division title this year, but would each guy be a part of a 2016 Giants team? Bird's age would be a concern. Leak obviously young and and talented. How about those two guys? And how do you think Brian Sabian and Bobby Evans plan that for the future? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. You know, I, I haven't really been in those discussions from an outside uh, point of view. I, Mike Leak would fit perfectly here, especially with his pitching style, sinker slider in that ballpark. Uh, he's a competitor, as you see. Uh, a, a young, even though he's a veteran, he's still fresh in his, his arm, a very great athlete. And Marlon Bird's a professional. He's a professional hitter. Uh, he's been with a lot of teams. Uh, this place is not a bad place when you're even a little older to come because of the, the weather here it helps. It's not even in the hot summer. It's foggy and perfect. Uh, and, uh, you know, he wants to win. He, he And he likes the he, look, the, the thing about this ballpark is the fans. The fans demand, it doesn't matter who you are, the fans demand you to play and play hard and play great and win and do your best. So that helps too. That, that puts a little bit of 
ignition and motivation in a, especially this time of year. When you see some of these other ballparks around the league when teams are out of it, that's pretty hard to get motivated. But here, I mean, I mean that's like a playoff atmosphere. Well said. And then, Paula, you got the music? Well, yeah, so let's look forward to tomorrow night, right, Tim? We're going to Slim's. We got Tim Flannery and the Lunatic Fringe. We got Jake Peavy and his band. That's fantastic. So I want you to talk about that and what fans can expect if they haven't come out and seen you guys before. But also, I don't think I've ever asked you this question before. I want to jump on this right now because you just played a couple songs on the air with us. They're both great tracks. The riff is in my head. But I'm thinking, who are some of your influences? Who were the guys you looked up to, helped shape you? I heard little aspects of Bob Dylan in there. You mentioned Jackson Brown during the break. So who are the some of the musicians you admire? Well, I, Jackson Brown's a friend, and I grew up listening to him on the radio in the 70s in Southern California. And, yeah. and that one song you heard with the piano, that's uh, Jim Croce's kid, A.J. Croce. So those guys were big influences. But I was raised in a little bit of the Kentucky, a lot of the Kentucky influence, the Everly Brothers, the Leuven Brothers. And then I came to Southern California and fell in love with the Flying Burrito Brothers. Yeah. Uh, and then the songwriters, you know. But then I, look, the last 10 years up here has influenced my life in so many ways. And you can hear it in the music. This record that's coming out, or is out, it's a petty album. It's, a, it's got Weir in there. It's got Jackie Green in there. It's got the whole Bay Area in there. And uh, it's called Three Ring Circus. And it's about the 33 years on the... Blessed Road. <laughs> <laughs> and tomorrow night? It's, uh, tomorrow night is Slim's. Out, eh? Yes, get tickets. Tomorrow night at Slim's. Uh, releasing a brand new record. Releasing a Love Harder project. A nonprofit to raise money to help uh, people. And uh, you can help us by buying the record. All the money goes immediately to to fund Brian Stowe and his speaking engagements uh, about anti-bullying. Nice. Go see Tim Flannery, the Lunatic Fringe, and Jake Peavy at Slim's. And uh, thanks for the time. Thanks for having me. Thanks, <laughs> Flan, Murph, and Mac. See ya.